But uh, I love following the commissioner. You know a guy's highly intelligent when he can say that much and say that little. Um, so good luck writing all that stuff, folks. I'm up. What do you got? Uh, we're looking forward. We're, we're picked 13th by most of you in this room uh, and, uh, and some others, and that's fine. I, I think we're going to outperform that. I would expect we do. Uh, I like our guys. Should be a fun year. The Big Ten is, you know, obviously got some elite teams at the top. I think Minnesota's really good. I think Michigan, Michigan State's elite. Uh, I think there's a lot of good teams. Iowa's going to be much better. Um, and, uh, but I think it feels like when you get three through 12 or 13, it feels like the NFL. Uh, you've got extremely successful coaches, well-resourced programs. You've got teams that are prepared. You've got teams that, uh, you know, if you get injured, you're dead. If you get on a roll, you could be real good. Uh, but it's, it certainly feels like what you've seen in an NFL season where one team out of nowhere is all of a sudden in the playoffs and making a run. And, and there certainly are those teams uh, that are steadfast, but on any given year, something good can happen. So we're excited to make that work for the Huskers is what I'm trying to say. So with that, are there any questions? Thank you, Coach. I'm just trying to seal the Big Ten Cup. It's a good one. No questions? Oh, we got one All back, right. back left corner. I'm not here forever now. <laughs> Coach, just your thoughts on the, on the league going to a 20-game schedule and how it's going to affect you guys going forward. Yeah, you know, originally I didn't love the 20-game schedule, uh, especially with the in-state um, the in-state uh, protected rivalries. I felt like it almost felt like a because there was some uh, felt like a tier. Like we've got these guys that are traditional powers, and we're going to make sure we protect them. But I know that's not the case. Uh, but as we get more into it, I think, you know, playing valuable games and, and more valuable games and consistent teams is really good for us. I think it's, it's probably overall very good for the league. Uh, will it get us another t team or so into the NCAA tournament, which would be the goal? Uh, yeah, I think that just depends on anything. I think factors, uh, anytime you play high-level games, you know, the Huskers have played as many high-level games as anybody in regular season the last two seasons. And, and I think we played 21 two years ago and, and 20 last year or whatever and top 100 teams. And I think only Michigan State's played more. But uh, when you look at that, uh, you know, we don't ever want for much when it comes to playing an ambitious schedule. So uh, we're always going to play that way. Uh, I'm excited about uh, whether it be a 20-game schedule or an 18-game schedule. The Big Ten is what I grew up in, and it's an elite league, and it's certainly one of the best, uh, whether it be in March or uh, January. Go front row, left side. Hi, Tim. Uh, Dave Jones from Penn Live. You, you went through quite a 20, 12 months as far as transitions and people leaving, people coming. Um, did you get any cohesive reason for why all that happened to you? Was there any one kind of reason that you heard from these kids who got out or, or what? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, it, what's, and what's interesting about it is I, this team is, is probably more cohesive than any team I've had now in about three or four years. Uh, what's left? And, and so, you know, one, no one likes losing. Uh, there's no doubt about it. When, when you're struggling, uh, you know, kids don't want to be a part of losing. Even kids, you start 67 out of 69 games. Uh, you know, uh, you, you understand that. And so young people get frustrated. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, one interesting thing, I, I think that I had four kids in my office last year before we played a game that asked me about their position. And this year I've had zero ask me about their position. And so, I, you know, I think that that may tell you a couple things. One, I need to start saying we play positionless basketball, but yes, you're guarding the center um, on the other team, the positionless center, the big tall guy, the, you know, Isaac Haas, who's 7'9", 280, uh, and, uh, and darn good at sales, by the way. He, he, I think he just sold me something on the bus on the way here. Uh, he's going to be a successful dude. But uh, when you look at that, when people get all caught up in their role and it becomes this... Uh, this kind of uh, rumination about what about me, uh, things get tough. And usually that hurts the team. And so you get young people that are going to leave. 
because they're more concerned about their well-being than they are the, team, the condition of the program. That's, that's a way it is in business, in life. That's why you have divorce. That's why you have you know, people leave businesses, and that's what happens to basketball teams too. Let's go left-hand side in the back middle. Hey, Tim, what, you, you mentioned... Is Kobe. this an upgrade from the World Herald? Yeah, is that what's going I'm, on? I'm stepping up. Uh, <laughs> please take a break, vacation. Um, there's nothing going on in Nebraska right now anyway. You know, <laughs> I've heard, them. yeah. Um, you mentioned cohesion. When, when did you get a sense that this team sort of developed that? Uh, at, at what point during the summer, I guess, what indications did you gather from the group that, um, you know, it, it's going to be pretty tight-knit? You know, John, last spring, and, and, and Sean was right with us and our staff. I mean, we had, so we have two guys that are stars that transferred out that were part of a coveted recruiting class. And all heck's breaking loose. And that's to put it as mildly as I can. And all of a sudden, I'm in. Sean's in my office. Sean Eichhorst, the athletic director of Times, in my office. And Kenya walks in, and we're going to lose another starter. There's rumors out there. This coach has just called us to say he's here and this, that. And you really feel like, you know, you see one of those movies with, uh, uh, you know, Too Big to Fail or, or whatever it might be. You feel like you're in the room with the Wall Street bankers going like, this is, this is, this can't be happening and it, more than anything I think that galvanized us going through those moments together figuring out all right who's really in here and why are you in and who's out and no, there's nothing wrong with being out you know I mean you only get there's very few things in life you get where they say you got four years to do it you have four Evan you have four years to be married or you have four years to drive a car or for, but college basketball you have four years to play college basketball so you got to get it right I mean, it's got to go right for you. So kids are going to leave if it's not right. And it's got to be right to their taste palette and their preference, too. Because there aren't many things in life that are like a college basketball career or a college athletic career. So, you know, I don't mind if they leave. And I think that then with some of the other feeling that, oh, boy, this is a what's going on with the Huskers. This is a bad deal that actually just made us stronger and better. And that's why I really like this team. I think there's more cohesiveness. We're a stronger team. And I think we've got plenty of talent, too. Time for one last question. Not that anyone would marry Evan Daniels. That's 